entering into a great civil rights leader who represented so many people in Montgomery, Alabama, and throughout the world, really, because he really uh, did so much for the cause, for the movement, being the person who, one of the main persons to spearhead and start the Montgomery bus boycott movement. This is just uh, one of the rooms and some of or a few of his awards. This has been restored by his niece Alma Johnson who is truly incredible. Um, Personally, I've been in this house. I've slept here, visited my godfather, and what she has done is truly amazing. But really, this is totally history in terms of a man who has done so much. And I wanted to hear some of his books. Um, most of them are dated, but um, I'm sure that some of them may be early 1900s. This is one of the, the guest rooms, and just to get give you an idea of what it looked like, that's a homemade quilt there. That typewriter is what he used to type many letters um, that he has written to many important people. Um, he corresponded with um, Eleanor Roosevelt and many many others um, and which was transposed on that typewriter um, some books there and but looking at this room you could get a feel of somewhat of history well at least I can um, but truly truly amazing um, there's so many things that has happened in this house that I will talk about in a minute. We are coming into the hallway where um, Miss Johnson, Alma Johnson, his niece, who has been um, putting things together so that people could can really get an idea of how Mr. Nixon, where he lived, and this side here actually is his son's side, and I'm going to show the other side. This is uh, my godfather, um, E.D. Nixon, also known as Nick Latour. That was his uh, performer's name, his stage name. You, you don't know those pictures. Hmm? See sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm showing different pictures. And uh, this is really, really great. Um, right now, I am going to show you the opposite side of the wall. And that's Alma Johnson. She is the one who has put all this together. Um, and believe me, um, the work that she has done is beyond remarkable because um, she pretty much had to go through a lot of papers and coordinate things and it was uh, a tall, tall order for any man or woman. But because of her love and dedication and because of her connection with her, her uncle who was so important to her and who has taught her a lot, it's been her mission in life to make sure or to ensure that his legacy lives on and there's so many things that's a picture with him and Cicely Tyson as you can see and a 
picture of him and his son. And just just been been incredible in terms of what she's been able to salvage and put together. Uh, okay. The Edie Nixon Summer Olympics. Yeah, the Edie Nixon Summer Olympics is something that happens annually that he began. And he's he was all he was about many things. One of the things that was important to him was the youth. Is that correct, Alma? That's correct. And he really believed in the youth. He has done so many things for them to help. And we had over a thousand students cheering, participating last year. And in that's Olympic. and that's wonderful. And and you know and something he started and and it's great. She just mentioned that over a thousand students participated. Um, at the Summer Olympics. Now this here, as you can see the garments that's on the door, um, E.D. Nixon's son, um, my godfather, um, he was a uh, person who definitely um, um, had a lot of African um, wear. And as you can see, these are some of the things that he had homemade. Um, not homemade, I'm sorry, but, but personally made for him. And this is his room here. We're going to go in here real quick and see his room. Um, but this is just really amazing what Alma has done because she has not only preserved this, this incredible space, she done it with dignity. Um, only a few people would have been able to really uh, recreate or to um, polish um, what was already here. Um, all these things, everything in here is authentic. There's nothing bought or anything like that that was not here already. And for her to preserve it the way she did and to, it's really, really amazing. This is uh, um, Mr. Nixon and his wife. And there's another picture of her. And that's him receiving, I believe, one of his honorary degrees that he received. So this is a room that E.D. Nixon once slept in. And as we move further along, you see there's a picture of Godfather. This was a celebration. Uh, yeah, that's Godfather. That's Stevie Wonder. And that's Ruby D. Um, Nick Latour was a, uh, an artist, an actor a well-known actor in Hollywood, very respected, and has created his own legacy um, in his own, his own right. Um, actually, this was a, a celebration honoring him and, and, and um, Ruby D. and Stevie Wonder came to pay homage, just to give you an idea. Um, not sure if you can see that young man right there is me. <laughs> um, that was an incredible night. There's, that's Robert Guillaume. Um, there's so many as Bill, Bill Duke. These are great. These are people who are doing a lot of uh, things now, currently in Hollywood. That's Loretta Devine, right there. Just to give you an idea of the people, that's Bill Cobbs, right there. Just to give you an idea of some of the people who came to celebrate, that's Della Reese. Okay, um, and this. So many people came to pay respect to him. Um, so many people were there. And that lady right there, she played on Star Trek. If you, the original Star Trek, she was the beautiful African American, the only black lady on Star Trek. Um, that's her. And that's my godfather right there. That's Nick Latour. Um, sorely missed. And here are some other awards and things of that and but just to give you an idea I'm just going to show the dining room and the living room right now um, which um, you know Jesse Owens okay yes come on in in this dining room okay in this dining room Alma who who was in this space Alma in this at these tables at this table in these chairs you had uh, Adam Clayton Powell, Jesse Owen, the track runner. You had, uh, uh, what's it? Rudolph? Yeah. 
the, and, and, uh, Philip, Mitch, Philip Rudolph, the, the Pullman um, Porter, right? Yes. The, okay. And uh, you had Brian Rustin. Okay. And many others. And so uh, Reverend King and his wife were at Dr. Stable. King King was here? Yes. Also? Okay. They were here too. And there were many others, so you know, that I can't name right off. Okay. Uh-huh. Wonderful. So this is a dining room. Like I said, many important things happen. And also, we're going to go into the living room and we're going to conclude. But I want to also mention that in this very house, and this very house was bombed. You know, as you can imagine, during that time, it was a real hard time for, for blacks. Uh, there were a lot of racist people. Um, and because of... Um, E.D. Nixon's involvement with, with, with the cause, with, with trying to make things equal for, for blacks. He was, his life was threatened. So this very house was bombed also. Also in the front lawn, they, there, was a, there, were, there was a cross burning right in this front, front yard, outside this window. They burned a cross. Um, and so just many things transpired in this room. Um, and in this house, and men like E.D. Nixon is the reason why that some of, was one of the reasons why African Americans um, have advanced. Of course, there are many people who have contributed, but he, he definitely contributed to um, allowing us to be seen equally. And... Oh, oh. And in this house, which is very important, and Alma just reminded me, most, some of you may know or may, or may not know, but this man here is the man who is responsible for getting Rosa Parks out of jail. This is E.D. Nixon at a, at a later age. And it was this house, this very house that he used as collateral or to, to he had to put up, um, you know, in order to uh, wow. have her... Um, taken out of jail, but it was this house, and he owned he owned this house. He was one of the few African Americans who owned a home back then, and but but it was because of him um, that uh, not only was it because of him because of the, the the bus boycott and being instrumental in that, but he's the one who got Rosa Parks out of jail. He's the one who organized and taught people how to organize. You can't just have a bus boycott. But he learned that from Rudolph, uh, Philip Rudolph. And he implemented um, what he learned from Mr. Rudolph, and that's why the Montgomery bus Randolph. boycott. Randolph. I, yep, thank you. Randolph. Um, boy, I should know that. Randolph uh, is one of the important reasons why that the Montgomery bus cop was... was uh, was was uh, successful, you know. It just didn't happen. This is right here in my hand. It's called the Pullman Company, the identification card that belonged to E.D. Nixon. He was a Pullman porter, and that job was extremely, extremely instrumental in allowing him to do the things that he did. That job changed his life in so many ways, because living in Alabama. Um, his job allowed him to go into different cities and different states and see how things were different, how things were in some places were more fair, and that gave him um, the 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 part of his courage to 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 make sure that his fellow Alabamians were able to be treated fairly. So, um, this is the house of Edie Nixon a great American hero who has done so much for us.